All right, so uh, I am, let's see, about 70 miles into the New Hampshire Appalachian Trail right now. Uh, and I'm in an inn last night, stayed here. Uh, about to start the Pemigewasset Wilderness section of the trail. Uh, and I'm just getting everything sorted out, making sure it's all here and in the right place. So I figured I'd make a video to run through like how I pack my backpack and kind of the thought process behind it for me. Um, so we'll just jump right into it. I have my backpack here. It's empty, completely empty. Um, oh, except my sunglasses are in the front pocket here. Um, so I think that's a good place to start. I got my sunglasses in my shoulder strap pocket. Um, First thing I'm usually going to do uh, when I'm packing up my pack, say in the morning when I'm at camp, or like right now, uh, is I would take my sleeping bag, which I just have here lofting out, uh, and stuff it starting at the foot box into its stuff sack. I have a Sea to Summit compression dry sack, um, so I just kind of grab handfuls and stuff. You don't need to fold it or anything like that. Um, this is much less time consuming. So. This is a 30 degree sleeping bag. Uh, one I have fits into the small size stuff sack. Depending on what sleeping bag you have, it might be a little bigger or maybe a little smaller. Um, I have been not even needing this at night. In fact, I actually, at the base of Musilaki, uh, slept with it completely off of me all night. It's almost by accident, I just kind of fell asleep. And I was fine. It's only been getting down to like 50, so usually just putting on like a, my jacket is enough. But we'll be up on ridges for this section so it might get a little colder. The 30 degrees should do me just fine. I know some people were getting liners uh, mailed to them for this section. Um, but I don't think that'll be necessary this time of year. Even up on the ridges. It's funny uh, hiking with all these through hikers uh, who are from all different parts of the country and they don't really know the white super well, I mean, which isn't surprising. Why would you unless you've lived up here, you know, your whole life? Uh, but it's fun kind of like being able to help them get around and tell them where to go and stuff and give them advice. Uh, so got my sleeping bag packed up here. I'm just going to go ahead, take my pack, and shove my sleeping bag sideways, like this, into the backpack. So it's sideways uh, this way, kind of parallel to my back, uh, and at the very bottom. And then my sleeping pad will also fit right next to it at the very bottom of my pack. And this is a little denser. It weighs about the same, but it takes up less space, so I put this closer to my back. I kind of wedge it between the frame and the sleeping bag. And that kind of forms a nice like base for the pack. Some structure and shape to it. And get those nicely stacked up. All right, so the next thing I would put in there is going to be my clothes bag. Uh, everything that goes in my clothes bag, which is this bag here, uh, is stuff that I won't need to take out during the day. I'll only need it at night when I'm in camp, when everything has been unpacked from my pack. So it's all right to have it down at the bottom. Uh, I don't have any 
like kind of zippers or anything on my backpack to get into it. Uh, it's just the top entry. So I'm packing everything in order of accessibility for the most part. So let's see, I should run through what clothes I have. I have a pair of long underwear, uh, two extra pairs of normal underwear, in addition to the pair that I'll wear today. Three extra pairs of socks, in addition to the pair I'm wearing. And an extra pair of shorts. I also am wearing a pair of shorts, obviously. So, I debated bringing one or two pairs of shorts. I ended up bringing two, and I'm glad I did because after one or two days hiking in the same shorts, they smell awful, and when you come into town, it's nice to be able to just change into something that doesn't smell terrible so you don't offend people. Uh, and then the last thing I've got in there is just my jacket. This is like a synthetic fill, uh, kind of mid-weight jacket. I, mine is a Arc'teryx Atom, but you could just, you know, any kind of fleece or mid-weight insulating layer is good. Um, and that one I haven't really been needing either. I sometimes put it on at night, but that's about it. Now, I am going to be up on ridges today, so if it happened to get, you know, blustery or chilly up there, instead of putting on that coat, um, which would probably be a little too warm to hike in, I would probably just put on my rain jacket. Uh, that'll give me enough blockage from the wind to warm me up while hiking on a ridge or something in the summertime. So, I have my clothes bag here, and I'm going to do the same thing I do with my sleeping bag, which is just put it in the pack this way, so that it fills out the whole circumference, and it's kind of stacking on top of the stuff that's already in there. So, just like that, put it in, I'm going to kind of press it down, make sure everything's taking up as much space in this plane as possible, gives it Again, just more structural stability. I do have still have some space in front of that, so um, I mean, there's nothing really to put there, sadly. So there might just be a little gap, but as you walk, things press down and they fill out the pack. So the next thing is my food bag. This is probably my heaviest single item. Uh, with three days of food in it right now, it probably weighs five or six pounds. Um, so that's going to go the same way, sideways, inside of my pack, on top of my food. Shake it down, feel, you should be able to feel that there isn't any huge gaps. I do have a bit of a gap right here, but not a huge deal. This is nicely filling out the whole circumference of that plane again. Um, so, that's pretty much all the like big stuff I have. Um, what I've got left is my electronics bag. So this has all my chargers, some cables, it has my headlamp, and the extra batteries for it um, in a dry bag just so nothing can happen to it, even though most of it's waterproof, not all of it is. I have my bag of snacks, so this is stuff that I'll want to get to throughout the day. I'm going to keep that at the top of my pack, so that's separate from my food bag, which has all my like dinners and breakfasts and stuff that I won't need when I'm not at camp. Uh, and then I also have this ramen dinner, which I'm just not putting down at the bottom because I don't want it to get crushed. Uh, no other reason than that couple beef jerky sticks, those don't fit into the ziplock, so those will just be floating. Uh, and then and, and the only other thing that's going to be going inside is my cook kit, so I have my pot here, fuel canister, my spoon, my stove, the stuff sack for the pot, and I have this buff 
that I've been using just kind of as like a dishcloth. Uh, and I also wrap my fuel canister in it just so it doesn't clink around and get rust inside my pot or anything. So these do tend to rust up. This one I haven't used yet, so it's not rusty, but it will be in a day or two. So what I'll do is just kind of put it right in the middle of the buff. You could also use like a handkerchief or something. Uh, and I'll just wrap that up in the buff like that. So it's almost like a little present and I'll just slide it right into the pot here. And then I'll put my stove on top of that and the lid can close on top of everything. And then I just put it in the stuff sack so it'll hold the lid on to the pot. So this kind of gets up over the lip of the pot and when you cinch it down it holds the lid on. And then I just tuck my spoon, this is the MSR folding spoon, um, which is just, I like it because it's lightweight. They're really cheap, so if, if you do lose it or break it, it's easy to replace. Uh, and I just tuck that into the side of the stuff sack there and cinch it all up. And there's my cook kit. It weighs maybe like 12 ounces, less than a pound, definitely. Um, so those two need to go in. This needs to go in. All the other stuff is staying on the outside of the pack. Oh, and I also almost forgot. I have my tent down here. Um, the rainfly and the footprint I have separate because they're kind of grimy and wet still from uh, the thunderstorms the other night. So I'm going to keep those on the outside of my pack. And I have the tent body here, uh, which I'll be putting on the inside. This is still dry and it's inside a dry bag. So. This one, it's nice to have up close to the top so it's accessible if you need to set up your tent up. I mean, if you need to, obviously you're gonna need to, um, but it just makes it so you don't have to dig through your pack because that's the first thing you're usually gonna wanna do when you get to camp to set up your tent just so you have a little area to kind of explode your gear into. So then I'll take my food bag and basically what I'm going to do, I know you can't see it, but I'm just going to pack things around each other, again, in, in one plane, so I can see the top of all of these things, and I can grab them if I need them. Um, so I have my pot. I'll put that on the other side of my tent from my electronics bag. And then I have my food, snacky snacks, uh, and these I'm actually going to tuck in close to my back again because it is a tiny bit heavy, especially with the bag of Chex Mix, uh, it probably weighs more than the body of my tent, so that'll go closer to my back. So the whole idea here, other than packing in order of accessibility, is keeping weight close to the back and in the middle of the pack. So you don't want your weight down here and you don't want it up here. You want it right in the center so that the stays or the frame in your pack can transfer that load down through them into the hip belt. Um, so I have my snacks, my tent, my electronics bag, and my cook kit all kind of visible from the top on the if you can see here, but that's kind of what I'm working with. So I can reach in and grab any of these if I need to. Um, and then I'm just going to go ahead and toss my ramen dinner right on top of that. And my two beef jerky sticks as well. I try to eat that ramen dinner tonight just so it can stop messing up my pack order. And then one more thing I almost forgot is my first aid kit. Obviously you want this easily accessible should you need it. So that will also be right at the top of my pack. So um, if I take out my ramen dinner and my medical first aid kit, Everything else that I put below there is easily grabbable as well. 
So I really I have quick access to one, two, three, four, five, six things just by opening my pack and unrolling the top. So even though I just have the top opening, I can still get quick access to a lot of stuff in here. Um, I don't have a brain on my pack, a top lid or anything like that, uh, which a lot of packs do have. So that would be another place you could put your uh, first aid kit and things like that if you did have that on your backpack. So, that's everything going inside, and there's still a lot of stuff out here, so you're probably like, where is that going to go? Well, I have this big, I call it a kangaroo pocket in here, because it just kind of expands endlessly almost, or at least it seems like it does, um, and then I have two storage pockets on the sides of my pack. As in addition to the water bottle pockets, which are which are separate, so I use these for storing um, my rain gear. Typically, I've got my rain coat here and my rain cover here, um, so I'll just tuck those usually both on one side of the pack, just because if I need to grab one, I'm going to have to grab the other anyway. So it doesn't matter if they're stacked up like that. And then the other things I'll keep in those side pockets are my trash bag. This is where I put my trash when I have trash. I have none right now, so it's empty. And my sunscreen because I'm very vulnerable to the sun. So anytime uh, in the morning I'll put it on and then if I'm right about to head up above tree line I'll, I'll put on some more uh, just so that I don't get skin cancer. So, I'll tuck my trash bag in there, I'll tuck my sunscreen in this side, and then I have my water filter, um, so my rain fly, my footprint can go into my kangaroo pocket here, this is where I've been keeping them the last few days, and it seems to be working out pretty well. It allows them to dry out when they're kind of open to the air, just with this mesh. And uh, that way they don't get all moldy, and I don't have to put them in the bag with my tent body, which I want to keep as pristine as possible. So, put my water filter right on top of those. That I will want easy access to. Um, when you stop at a water source, you don't really want to be digging through your pack because you're probably in the middle of hiking. And you don't want to take a long stop, you just want to grab some water and get going. So having that ready to go is super convenient. And then I have my notebook and my bug head net. These I like to have in my hip belt pocket. Um, just so again, they're easy to grab if I need to. Um, and then yeah, in the other hip belt pocket, um, I have my tiny little multi-tool attached to the zipper here. Again, so I can just grab it while wearing my pack. It just has like a built-in carabiner which I can pop off. Uh, and then I'll put my phone in this hip belt pocket here, which I'm using to record the video, so I can't. Uh, and usually I'll, I'll put some cash in there too. I try to carry like 20 to $40 of cash on me uh, while I'm on the trail. So you never know when you might need it. Um, there you go, I think that's everything. Oh, nope. I have also toilet paper, readily accessible, always, for obvious reasons. And the olive oil it doesn't I, I don't need to keep this readily accessible. I usually just pour it on my food at night, but uh, I don't like keeping it in my food bag just in case it explodes. So I keep it also tucked in to one of these pockets. Uh, and this is one of the things I really like about this pack is these pockets on the sides, which would normally be devoted to water bottle storage, are so big 
and I can put so much stuff in them and still have these pockets for the water bottles. Uh, it's just really convenient and nice. So um, that's everything other than you know the clothes I'll be wearing. Um, so hopefully that was a little informative video on how I'm packing my pack on the AT.